Now we're ready to put the crank in. All the bearing clearances are correct. Uh, the first step is to put the thrust shims in. Um, they're going to go on this journal on both sides. The groove sides here must face outwards. So, you take my assembly lube, it's a little trick. Get some started on here. And groove side facing out, put it on the journal, it'll stay in place. You repeat the same thing with the next one. Now I'm ready to put all the assembly lube on all the journals, lay the crankshaft in, and then put the main caps on. The next step is going to be installing the pistons and rods and checking the rod bearing clearances with the plastic gauge. But first, we're going to have to secure the crankshaft down into the block so that we can check the bearing clearance. Um, you're going to use the number one and five main cap here just to secure the crank down. Um, you're just going to take the bolts, dip them in uh, SA non-detergent 30 weight break in motor oil, just thread them in, and you're going to be hand tightening these, these four bolts here to hold the crankshaft in um, while we, put, we install the pistons and rods. The next step is to install the piston and rod into the bore here uh, along with the rings um, and we need to check the bearing clearances so we need to install the bearing into the journal here. They simply line up the tang and they slide in. Same thing with the other side of the journal. Now the next thing is to line the rings with the piston so that no ring gap is on any load axis of the piston. Um, so using the supplied chart on the screen right now, you're going to line your rings and then we're going to be ready to put it in the bore. Now that we have our rings aligned on the non-load axis on the piston, we're going to take our SA30 detergent motor oil, non-detergent, and we're going to apply the motor oil all across the piston skirt and all across the rings so that it glides into the bore easily. So we're going to do that now. Using the ARP ring compressor, I'm going to lay it over the bore here. and. I'm going to make sure my intake valves are towards the intake side and I'm going to drop my piston in here. I'm going to take a soft mallet and tap it down into the board. The first rod bearing clearances we're going to check are number one and four. Um, usually can only do two at a time. I usually do the opposing opposing cylinders is one and four, and then two and three. So we're going to lay the plastic gauge down on the journal the journal here, same way we did with the mains. And then we're going to re we're going to install the rod cap making sure that the tang goes to the tang side right here. We're going to hand tight these down and then we're going to torque these a spec for right now. Now after you have torqued the rod cap down, um, loosen all the bolts, make sure that you don't move the crank either way so you don't smear the, the plastic gauge and uh, make sure the bolts are all the way out and what I do is just kind of hold onto the back of the rod here and tap down so the rod separates without smearing the plastic gauge and pull the cap off. Next, we're just gonna check how the, the plastic gauge looks. Um, I shot for 1.8 to 2 thou in the rod bearing clearances here. And this is just a little bit, a little bit narrower it looks like than uh, 1.5 thou. So we're right about in the range um, for these two journals. Uh, this one looks, this one looks about the same, about 1.8 thou. So these rod journals are okay. So next step, is we're going to clean the, clean the uh, plastic gauge off, we're going to put assembly lube on, we're going to 
Uh, then we're going to use the rod bolt uh, stretch gauge and stretch the rod bolts. The next thing we need to do after you've checked the bearing clearances is to apply lube on the journal, put the rod cap back on, tighten the bolts down with a little bit of supplied molly lube, and we're going to use a, a rod stretch gauge uh, tool to actually torque the rod bolts down. Um, the stretch gauge tool allows you to actually uh, measure how much the bolt stretches, which is the proper way to check torque. Uh, instead of using a torque wrench, which can be, which can be inaccurate. Um, Manley's calling for um, six thousandths uh, stretch on the bolt here. So I zeroed my gauge out, and I'm going to be tightening this with the wrench, which is a 7 sixteenth head or 11 mil, and until I get six thousandths stretch out of the bolt. And right there is six thousands. Now that I've installed piston and rod uh, in the journals two and three, we're going to check the bearing clearances again with plastic gauge. We're going to do the same, same steps as we did for uh, the journals one and four. Next we're going to check side to side clearance on the rod, the rod caps to the crank here. Um, these are going to be about a hundredth, so I'm just going to take a feeler gauge, make sure it feels good, and I'm going to do that for all four of the journals with the rods. Last thing we need to do is install the girdle. Um, you need to take each of the bolts out, dip them in uh, 30 weight oil here, and just make sure they're good and lubricated. So we're going to do that. After we do all these, we're going to hand tighten them down and then tighten them in the factory sequence. The six bolts here are 49 foot pounds, two end ones here are 56 foot pounds. Now that we have everything assembled and clearanced, um, there's plenty of assembly lube over all the rotating assembly. Um, we're just going to spin the crank, make sure it spins easy, it spins really nice, there's no, there's no drag on it. Um, this should be ready to go. The one thing I didn't mention while I was doing the assembly is I replaced the factory oil squirters um, located down here with the Golden Eagle oil squirter plugs. Um, they plug the oil squirter holes so that you get more uh, oil pressure to all the bearing assemblies. Um, which is more important than actually oiling the cylinder wall for the piston since it has aftermarket pistons. The last thing that we need to check for clearances is the rotor oil pump rotor to crankshaft clearance. Uh, when blocks are sleeved, they are line honed and it sits the crank up further into the block. So what we need to do is check the clearance between here and the crankshaft and make sure it's equal all the way around. If it's not, it can cause, the, it can cause undue stress on this, on this uh, gear in the rotor and actually uh, cause the oil pump to break over time. Once you remove the oil pump seal here and you press the oil pump on, you're going to use two feeler gauges. Um, these are three thousandths feeler gauges each. And you're going to walk them around the edge here and make sure that you have even drag across the oil pump. And this does The line hole on this block wasn't aggressive, so it didn't shift the crank further up into the block into the mains. We don't have to file the dowels that are located on the outer edge of the pump here to, to move the oil pump up enough um, with the crank. If you use feeler gauges on the snout here and one side is tighter than the other, you may have to file these dowels here slightly in small increments and then keep putting it back on and checking the rotor to crankshaft snout here uh, clearance and make sure that you have equal equal drag uh, all the way across. That concludes how to assemble and blueprint a Honda B-Series engine. Um, this build was for a force induction motor. Um, all motor you would build with tighter clearances.